15% of the country's energy needs to be covered by renewable sources by 2020. But that could prove to be too costly for the public, as RT's Laura Smith investigates. Wind turbines turn in the breeze. They might not generate much power, but they're certainly putting people in a spin. It's a row that's dividing David Cameron's coalition government. His energy minister says he's against wind farms and enough is enough, while his energy secretary says he's gung-ho for them. Who speaks for the government, the energy secretary or the energy minister? Or the prime minister, but in this case, he doesn't seem quite sure. There has been no change towards renewable energy. But in the same breath, he hinted the number of wind farms could be reviewed after current targets are fulfilled. This would anger the Liberals, but greatly please those who say wind farms are an expensive waste of time, such as landowner Philip Merricks, who lives near Little Cheney Court Wind Farm. The locals were united against it. Every single democratically local uh, organisation, that's the councils, were against it. But of course the developers were very careful. They dished out a lot of money uh, to locals and of course that bought a bit of support. Amazingly, wind farms have got a, a, a PR uh, campaign behind them that people do think, seem to think that they're helpful to the environment, which of course they're not. This one's been open since 2008, and during that time, output has improved. But it's coming from a pretty low base, at only 21.5% capacity in its first year, to just 26% last year. There are 26 wind turbines behind me, each one of which costs in the region of £2 million to erect. According to locals, we've come on a good day. All the wind turbines are currently working. Usually, they say that's not the case, and a lot of the time, they're just standing there. And that's the rub. People need electricity 24-7, not just when the wind's blowing. So wind power still needs supplementing by fossil fueled power stations. But despite its shortcomings, the taxpayer forks out 50% of its running costs. Are subsidies the right way to encourage an industry to mature? Or are actually what you're doing, I think what we're doing is we're rewarding inadequate technologies now and indeed we're um, fossilising them or infantilising them. We're actually preventing growth. Uh, what we really need to do is say to these people, yes, well, if you can improve and you can show that you've got a place in this, you're welcome. Uh, but at the moment we're covering them with gold when in fact they're quite inadequate. Locals are quick to point out that less than eight kilometres away is a nuclear power station supported by the community as a reliable source of power and local employer, unlike the wind farm which is controlled from Germany. But if David Cameron refuses to be blown off course, the government will stick to its plans and more than double the amount of onshore wind power by 2020 to meet European targets. Laura Smith, RT, Kent.